Hmm. So as I was saying, ki land degradation is it basically refers to the loss of productive capacity of a piece of land, and this loss is because of hum over exploitation by humans. So because of because of over exploitation, often the most two common properties which are affected are either the chemistry of soil or the bio biodiversity or biological properties or different organisms, their population, their diversity is affected. So there are a lot of reasons which lead to land degradation. There are reasons like industrialization, urbanization, unplanned destruction of trees, which eventually leads to soil erosion and therefore the water bodies are affected affected so it all sums down to cutting of trees when we talk about degradation of land or loss of the productive capacity the productive capacity matlab the producers or the the ones who are capable of producing something or producing food for us or all the components that we are using so those producers are affecting and it all sums down to deforestation so whether it's industrialization it's urbanization or unplanned cutting of forest, destruction of forest. It eventually it occurs because of deforestation and deforestation leads to it is the reason it is, it is the primary event behind or the reason for uh, so it is uh, it is the act which is occurring which leads to land degradation and land degradation often also includes erosion of soil which eventually leads to higher higher degrees of pollution, increased turbidity, the quality of water, as well as the min mineralization of water bodies increases. So all these events, they sum down to cutting of forests or deforestation. So everybody must have heard about floods, right? There are some floods in some areas. Have you ever wondered why floods occur? Or what is the reason behind flooding? landslides and global warming okay global warming and landslides can somebody else think of some reason ki floods hoti kyu hai matlab why does it happen ki aise ekdam se pani overflow karne lagta hai from the river bodies why does it happen because of dams also okay so we'll try to understand why flooding occurs so basically jo the natural process, the normal situation which is there, which in the nature, in the environment is ki rainfall, rainfall occurs and a large portion or some specific amount of rain, it is received by a piece of land or a forest area or any area which has some amount of trees, which has a crown of trees, it has a huge or some specific forest cover. So two things happen when rainfall occur. Pehla is ki there is some amount of water which is over the surface and it runs off eventually and it enters into the water bodies as it's happening here. The second thing which happens is that the water infiltrates. It starts percolating, it starts enter, it, it is absorbed, it is perceived, it is infiltrated by the soil which is below. And it remains within the soil as aquifers, as groundwater, as groundwater substances for a long period of time. But eventually, they enter into the water body. Some huge amount it enters into the water body. But since there are huge number of trees, there are huge number of trees with their dense roots which are holding together the soil, and it increases the capacity of soil to hold water. It increases the ability of hold some sort, some a huge amount of water within itself. So it creates a time. So a time lag creates a jata hai. Eventually, so immediately the amount of water which is entering into a water body is because of run, runoff. And the second source of water which is being received by your river bodies or whichever the source of water body is. So there is a time lag which is created because of there are a huge number of tree crowns and these trees which have a dense roots, a dense uh, spread of roots in the soil. So it allows soil to hold water for some amount of time and this creates something called a time lag. So ekdam se dono sources say a huge amount of water does not enter into these river bodies. It creates a time lag. So immediately the water which enters into these water bodies is because of runoff or the water which is there on the surface. It runs off, it enters into the water body and then some amount of water is absorbed by the soil and it stays in the soil. It does not take away the soil with itself because there is a huge population of trees present and hence it absor it gets absorbed, it gets infiltrated Over for a certain period of time it stays, it creates a time lag and then it enters into the water bodies. 
now we'll modify the situation there's a modified situation where you've cut off trees where you've destroyed trees so what do you think will happen if i destroy trees or if i deforest everything for urbanization industrialization or for um, just for using the resources of forest i start cutting off these huge sets of trees so what do you think will happen water holding capacity of soil will get affected yes the water holding capacity of soil gets affected so which in huge number of trees are cut so soil erosion occurs because these trees or the huge cover of trees which are there then the primary role is that they hold on to the soil which is there it not only does it increase the water holding capacity it holds the soil it it basically uh, it basically ensures ki the topmost layer of soil is not removed it's not washed away by heavy rains so when these huge when the forest huge covers of forest that they are cut they are deforested it affects the hydrological cycle it affects the water cycle so the one primary source of how the water how water is entering into water bodies is by surface runoff it's directly it's running off and it's entering into these river bodies then of course uh, uh, another source is that it enters into these and, and it it basically undergoes infiltration it's perceived by the soil it remains there and then after some time lag like it enters into these water bodies but when trees are cut there's nothing to hold on to your there's nothing there, there are no roots left there are no trees left which hold on to the soil which which ensure ki there is a high amount of water retaining capacity and also soil is no longer since there are there are no there are no trees left to hold on to the soil it also ca causes silt washing to so the uppermost layer of soil which is there to so the trees nahi honge to the uppermost layer also it gets washed away along with the soil the water the soil does not have enough capacity to hold such high amounts of water so this time lag which originally is there which ensures ki there are no the events like flooding is not does not occur so such uh, time lags are lost and ek sad a huge amount of water it enters into the water bodies and this leads to events like flooding and this also leads to events like drought because often uh, the dry the ground water and the aquifers so they ensure ki there is availability of water throughout all seasons even if the conditions are dry the presence of ground water or aquifer or the presence or the absorption of water by the soil it ensures ki there is gradual release of this water into the water bodies so there are no extreme dry conditions but when at one go this water enters into the water body so in dry conditions in excessively dry conditions there is lesser availability of water there is scarcity of water and this is why we switch to options like irrigation or generation of power using these artificial resources so this is how the this is how deforestation or land degradation is affecting the natural calamities that we see so the natural calamities like floods are also influenced by man made interferences they are heavily influenced by anthropogenic activities the original picture is that you simply a piece of land it receive receives some specific amount of rainfall which is absorbed by the soil and some amount runs off into the river body and the soil se absorb hota hai it remains in the soil because of presence of trees so the presence of trees the presence of roots especially so roots ka role hi hota hai they hold on to the uppermost layer the most fertile layer they they basically are they are trapping the uppermost layer they are holding tight to the uppermost layer so that the fertile layer of soil is not lost it stays as such and also the population of organism survives nutrients are also there and water holding holding capacity also is increased of the soil but when trees are cut it leads to events like soil erosion the topmost layer is also washed away which is known as silt washing or sedimentation and as it washed away the water holding capacity of soil is lost and the amount of water which was supposed to enter in much later into the water body it also enters the water body at the same time and this leads to events like flooding so is it clear to everybody how land degradation or cutting of forest is the primary source it's the reason uh, it is responsible for events like floods or soil erosion or siltation and when such high so apart from events like flooding happening or floods happening jab the uppermost layer of the soil is lost so the uppermost layer is the one which is richest in all minerals and nutrients it contains all the essential nutrients which were necessary for the plant to grow 
so apart from floods happening sometimes even if floods are not happening even if it, if may, the amount of rainfall is not very high to cause floods but it's enough to cause siltation it's enough to cause silt washing or the uppermost or soil erosion the uppermost layer it enters into these river bodies then the amount of total the concentration of nutrients or the concentration of elements which is not supposed to be very high in fresh water bodies it also drastically increases so it it degrades the quality of water as well it causes mineralization of drinkable or potable water as well so these are some consequences of land degradation is it clear to everyone yes okay so, so basically when you destruct forests the water cycle is disrupted water levels are also disturbed the time lag is destroyed which is responsible for even like flooding or soil erosion or anything that you see then floods during the rainy seasons it causes it leads to excessive flooding during rainy season and drought during dry seasons then to fix these things we switch to methods like irrigation and power generation is also they are also affected soil erosion is one of the biggest consequences of deforestation and is also a part of land degradation so one major component of land degradation is all also soil erosion and it's also a consequence of excessive deforestation or unplanned cutting of trees and it also destruction of forest also causes events like siltation there is excessive entry of sediments into these water bodies gravels get washed into water bodies when the topmost layer is lost is is lost then the plant life is also affected the microorganisms which were carrying out nitrogen fixation or sulfur cycle or uh, phosphorus uh, fixation or mobilization they are also affected so the nutrient quality or the the chemical as well as biophysical properties or the quality of so soil is also it's it's reduced it's, it declines rapidly so deforestation affects not only the biotic factors like abiotic factors like water cycle it, it or it, uh, it influences or uh, even natural calamities like floods but it's also responsible for a loss of a lot of plant as well as microbial life and it causes events like soil erosion which we'll be focusing in detail but before that can you think of some remedies or some ways to counter land degradation can you suggest some methods or ways this way we can get rid of or reduce land degradation in some way anyone only forestation a okay, forestation very good so we must plant trees then something else contour farming strip farming do you think okay so we can basically promote afforestation we can try planting as many trees as possible we can promote uh, sowing of grasses with because so grasses are one such plants which grow with spread very rapidly you plant a grass somewhere it spreads very very rapidly so if you cannot plant a tree try sowing a grass somewhere uh, you can uh, farmers can switch to methods like contour and strip farming which uh, prevents which helps in preventing and limiting soil erosion then instead of inorganic chemicals so the fourth point mentions use of organic matter instead of inorganic so what do you understand by this that we must use organic matter we must use biological matters instead of chemical fertilizers we must use manures your waste material your kitchen waste can also be used for growing plants so instead of switching to chemical methods or chemical fertilizers one must use organic matter or biologically available method then it helps so the usage of green manure or compost it helps in preservation of soil the quality of soil is preserved then we must not initiate bush fires or forest fires forest fires already are occurring naturally because of very high temperatures because of global warming so man made forest fires or bush fires must be avoided because it causes a lot lo loss of huge amount of biodiversity so both wildlife as well as plant life both of are both are lost in high numbers if man made or man influenced bush fires and forest fires they are incurred then one must plant trees like acacia so acacia is one plant which is uh, which can which which spreads very fast it grows very fastly 
so trees like acacia and this is one tree which is although a semi arid tree it can also grow in temperate regions because it spreads really fast so trees like acacia should be grown because they uh, help provide food for cattle or herbivores it also is important because it it's a good wind breaker when there are huge uh, when there is a very fast speed of wind so wind is also sometimes sometimes responsible for causing soil erosion so it can break those winds it can prevent or limit soil erosion to a certain extent their roots are very deep and penetrating so they have a very huge a vast root system so their root system is so vast that it ensures that the soil stays in place it is not washed away when there are heavy rainfalls or when there are when there is a when there is higher velocity of wind so presence of trees like acacia which is this tree it looks like this so the uh, presence of acacia or planting acacia ensures ki soil erosion is limited to a huge extent not only does it break does it break the uh, heavy flow of wind or the high velocity of wind it also in its deep penetrating roots or its high, its hugely widely spread roots they also ensure ki the uh, water holding capacity or water trapping capacity of soil is also increased and it's not lost as easily when there are events like erosion which can be because of heavy rainfalls or fast velocity of winds but whichever be the factor it is to ensure ki the uppermost layer or the most fertile layer is not easily lost because of soil erosion so these remedies they must be taken apart from that one can uh, switch to so uh, agronomic practices like uh, contour farming or mulching crop rotation strip farming so these must be carried out so in contour farming which is one of the oldest methods for uh, in, in areas jahan par there is low, low rainfall in preparation of the field so you often create furrows and ridges and these ridges are they are basically known as contours so water is caught and held in the furrows only it's stored there and it does not enter the contours or the ridges jahan par your plants are growing so it reduces the runoff and hence it prevents soil erosion it's of and it's often carried out in uh, on slopes in the form of terrace farming and uh, it, it basically use slopes as terrace and they create furrows and ridges so in furrows your water is collected and in ridges you have these plants growing so that there is not excessively uh, fast or heavy flow of water or runoff thereby causing soil erosion then mulching can also be done which is effective again which is as effective against wind as it as it is against water erosion so soil erosion although the soil is getting eroded there are a couple of reasons so we will be studying what are the factors responsible for soil erosion and soil erosion can occur because of water as well as because of wind so high speeds of or high level high velocity of water as well as wind both of them are responsible for soil erosion so in cases and places jahan par there is excessively high speed of wind Uh, the velocity of wind is very high so people prefer methods like mulching which is uh, which is good again i'll mention it here for you so they prefer to events like mulching jahan par they spread they basically use the uppermost surface of the uh, so of the soil jahan par your crops are growing and this uppermost area is used for uh, growing plants like maize uh, stock stocks of cotton they use um, potato tops and the basically the waste from these plants the green waste that you produce is used as mulch so mulch basically refers to formation of a to try to create a protective layer on the surface of where your plants are growing and these stems stalks or potato tops or dried material it ensures these basal material it ensures ki the plants are not reduced when there is high speed of wind this, this mulch is nearly i think 2 to 3 inches thick and it reduces evaporation of moisture it increases water holding capacity it also increases aeration and moisture and also it ensures ki when there is high flow high a high velocity of wind which is flowing or high water uh, flow from uh, through these fields so because of this 2 3 inch thick mulch the plants or the crops are not lost they do not fall off or soil is not eroded away so mulching is also one method which is one biological method or remedy to counter land degradation then crop rotation uh, also uh, is carried out it's 
a very common method which decreases soil loss it preserves the productivity of the land also so the same if you keep on pla planting the same crop year after year it depletes the soil minerals so this is overcome by cultivating legumes alternatively with your original crop or your crop of interest so you plant legumes alternatively so legumes a role hota hai to they basically uh, along with microorganism they are good fixators of nitrogen they help in replenishing the lost nutrient content bahut zyada to nahi ho raha na but bachcho upar se to nahi ja raha na samajh aa raha hai jo main padha rahi hu yes ma'am theek hai yes ma'am nahi samajh aaye to please beech mein rok ke puch lena so uh, as i was saying ki we have strip farming we have sorry contour farming jahan par we have made furrows and ridges furrows mein pani ikatta ho gaya to bahut excessive tha ridges mein your plants are growing which are safe and therefore you reduce runoff as well as soil erosion तो ये हम स्लोप से कैरी आउट कर रहे हैं मल्चिंग पे यू टेक दीज वेस्ट स्टॉक मटेरियल टोबेको का कॉटन का पटेटो के तुमने वेस्ट मटेरियल इकट्ठा कर लिया और फिर यू ऐसे मल्च मतलब यू बेसिकली जैसे यू आर कलेक्टिंग ऑल द ग्रीन वेस्ट यू आर प्लांट्स ग्रोइंग इन एंड तुमने उन्हीं प्लांट्स पे जहाँ सॉइल में ग्रो कर रहे हो ऑन द टॉप यू प्लेस ऑल दीज ग्रीन वेस्ट ऑल दीज ब्राउन वेस्ट सो यू मेक अ टू थ्री इंच थिक लेयर कॉल्ड मल्च and uski wajah se so water which is there in the soil it's not evaporated easily because you've created a layer on the top which limits water evaporation to soil moisture moisture impact rehta hai and also when there is a heavy flow of wind so these plants do not fall off easily because they have a protective layer on the on on the below protecting them from high speeds of wind and crop rotation is also there which is uh, wherein you ro rotate the crop so you if you year grow a same crop year after year so it will so let's say ki meri crop uses a lot of calcium and nitrogen but agar main wahi grow karti rahungi to it will uh, exhaust my soil my soil will be exhausted and devoid of those specific minerals which were necessary for my crop to grow to crop rotation mein bhi hum jab alternatively grow karte hain to we prefer those plants we prefer planting those types of crops which ensure ki jo minerals exhaust ho gaye hain wo unhe replenish kar sake ya reintroduce कर सके तो ऑफन ऑफन लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट और कैन यू गिव सम एग्जांपल्स ऑफ लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट्स वन और टू एग्जांपल्स राइस राइस नो राइस इज नॉट लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट्स आई विल सेंड अ पिक आई विल सेंड अ पिक्चर टू अनूर ही विल फॉरवर्ड इट टू यू लेग्यूमिनस प्लांट्स के मोस्ट कॉमन एग्जांपल इज सोयाबीन which uh, is a good nitrogen fixator then groundnut so root jahan pe jo uh, jo plants i'll send a picture to you anur give me i after the class i'll send a picture so basically leguminous plants wo hote hain jo nitrogen fix kar sakte hain and there's a family of plants which have a very specific type of flower which is definitely not important for your syllabus but matlab just to probably help you understand it better i'll send a picture so there are some plants like groundnut which is your muesli and soya bean and some pulses also so they have a very distinct type of flower so that it is their identification feature if you have to identify a legume even pea plant or matter so these plants in ki roots they are capable of forming the association with the nitrogen fixating bacteria jo humne nitrogen cycle mein pakda tha and this is why these so you can you just have to remember ek do examples if you ever asked to write about crop rotation that leguminous plants like soya bean groundnut or pea they are often or some pulses they are often used uh, as the alternative crop if you're carrying if you're performing crop rotation because they have huge abilities to mobilize nutrients and to replenish the lost nutrients from the field then there is strip cropping also so strip strip cropping it involves planting of crops in rows or strips so it is also it it is also a type of contour farming only kyunki yahan par bhi hum we making strips and we making rows but the only difference is that the contours which are made they are they they can so the only difference compared to uh, your contour farming is that you can either make these strips or these uh, rows in parallel direction they are pa parallel to one i saw you cook my style hmm sorry uh, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. So uh, as I was saying, this strip cropping may you either you uh, 
plant them parallel to one another or you plant them at contours you plant them at a 90 degree angle so when you grow them at 90 degree angle so it breaks the wind flow the speed or the velocity of wind is reduced and this is the only modification of this is how strip farming is different from contour farming you you've created a separate angle to so contour farming ka role tha ki wo sirf water matlab it works only against high what do you say the water erosion water induced erosion wo water ko collect karta tha <coughs> in its furrows but when you introduce strip farming to water erosion bhi prevent ho raha aur wind erosion bhi prevent ho raha because you've introduced a 90 degree angle just the high velocity of winds is prevented is this audible to everyone is there some problem okay i hope i'm audible to everyone then so these are some biological methods which are used then as i said ki you can also switch to if you uh, let's say you do, you do not have enough time or energy to grow all these crops to ensure ki hum hum forest cover ya fir you can all freely a forest and plant leaves it's difficult or you are not aware of how to plant so many trees you can simply retire you can simply switch to growing grasses and grasses basically they spread very easily they are often creeper type in nature so you plant a small patch of grass and it spreads very quickly and grasses are essential the sowing of grasses is important because not only does it provides food for grazers for herbivores but it also since they spread very fastly it increases the green cover they are spreading very fastly and also grasses since they are creepers they spread over the surface so they also hold soil very tightly so it also prevents soil erosion to a huge amount of extent so mm -hmm. these are some counters and remedies for land degradation so we'll be covering soil erosion of all the destruction of of, of in detail now what soil erosion is what are the different causes what are the different types and what events they actually lead to soil erosion so soil erosion as i think everybody knows is the loss of the topmost layer the topmost most fertile layer of the soil it is lost and its loss it leads to loss of vegetation also so whenever soil erosion occurs the two things happen pehla to of course your soil is lost so soil ki chemical biophysical properties its quality it gets lost second is that ki since the uppermost layer containing all the nutrients are lost it is the richest and the most fertile layer so immediately plants or the vegetation is also affected the quality of vegetation or the frequency or the abundance or population of plants diversity of plants everything is affected and similarly the microorganisms or the microbial community which which is the soil microbial community the microorganisms which would sustain and survive themselves in in the uppermost layer of soil it would also be affected so soil erodes so uppermost layer of the soil or the most fertile layer of the soil if that is lost that is known as soil erosion so the uppermost layer is also known as the feeding zone of plants or the feeding zone for plants because it contains all the essential nutrients it contains all nutrients in movable forms and utilized in usable forms basically so since it is the zone which has these nutrients in usable form forms it's known as the feeding zone of plants and apart from that as i said it's also home for almost all microorganisms and unless we're talking about water borne or air borne microorganisms so huge diversity of micro soil borne microorganisms like bacteria fungi algae protozoa a lot of insects the larvae is worms they are present in soil so they, it's also home for all these microorganisms as well and if excessive soil erosion occurs it disrupts the biodiversity अब दो चीजें हो रही हैं अगर न्यूट्रिएंट लॉस होगा तो द बायोजियो केमिकल साइकिल विल बी अफेक्टेड एंड अगर माइक्रोबियल लॉस होगा तो द फूड वेब और द डिट्राइटस फूड चेन और द फूड वेब इन जनरल विल बी अफेक्टेड सो इट अफेक्ट्स द स्ट्रक्चर इट अफेक्ट्स द फंक्शन ऑफ द इकोसिस्टम सोइल इरोजन हेवीली डिस्टर्ब्स द how the ecosystem functions and how it structurally वर्क्स एंड लुक्स एज वेल सो ऑल्दो सोइल इज अ रिन्यूएबल रिसोर्स इट्स अ it's a natural it's a type of natural resource but only 44% of the total land resources or the land cover it's under cultivation a major more than 50% of it is facing soil erosion and is not fit for usage or uh, for 
it's not basically not fit for use it's unfit for use so a huge a more than 50 percent of uh, soil or usable soil or renewable portion is it's facing soil erosion and is unfit for use. So what do you think are the causes of soil erosion? I think you know by now. Kya kya causes them? Hello, yes. Am I audible? Yes, I'm I'm deforestation. Yes. Ah, deforestation, exactly. Overgrazing, very good. So the primary reason is deforestation. Then what do you think or kya causes ho sakte hai? Do you think irrigation is also... And maybe slash and burn farming hoti, usse bhi soil kharaab hoti na? Slash and burn farming ho better. Access of irrigation. Very good. Access of irrigation and yes, who said slash and burn farming? I'm Swapnil. Very good Swapnil. So why do you think slash and burn farming affects uh, or causes soil because erosion? Because इसमें uh, क्या बोलते हैं जो फार्मर्स होते हैं वो एक पर्टिकुलर जगह पे रुकते नहीं ये आगे बढ़ते जाते हैं इससे हर जगह की सोइल खराब होती चली जाती है फॉर एग्जांपल वो वन प्लेस पे रहेंगे वहां पे क्रॉप ग्रो करेंगे उसके बाद या तो उसे काट देंगे या फिर उसे पूरी क्रॉप को जला देंगे फर्टिलिटी लेकिन इससे सोइल की जो मतलब सोइल होती कमजोर उसकी ग्रासपिंग वो हो जाएगी वो कमजोर हो जाती है और इरोजन हो जाता है वेरी गुड सो इनिशियली जो मैन मेड फॉरेस्ट फायर्स भी थी वो स्लैश एंड बर्न फॉरेस्टिंग के जो कल्टीवेशन था उसके कॉन्सेप्ट पे आया था कि हम फॉरेस्ट को भी बर्न करके वी कैन रिन्यू दी क्वालिटी ऑफ सॉइल सो इन शॉर्ट टर्म और फॉर अ शॉर्टर ड्यूरेशन इट वर्क बिकॉज यू वुड कट प्लांट्स यू वुड बर्न देम और सॉइल का जो न्यूट्रिय क्वान्टिटी था इट वुड गेट रिप्लेनिश्ड बट वॉट डिड इन रियलाइज इज की वेन यू डू इट रिपीटेडली when you do it repeatedly on a piece of land so the overall nutrient quality the physical and chemical properties of the soil they get they get the decline rapidly so slash and burn farming is also in the another reason it's, not, it's also responsible for degradation of land and also soil erosion to a certain extent then excessive flooding because of uh, deforestation is also responsible for soil erosion degradation of land in general is also responsible for soil erosion so there are these are some factors with some causes of soil erosion you can keep on adding all other factors also other uh, causes of soil erosion also like deforestation is not here which is the primary reason why soil erosion occurs so you must know of the, some couple of reasons which are responsible for erosion of soil similarly irrigation not only it uh, removes the upper of upper layer of soil excessive irrigation it removes the uppermost layer also but when the uppermost layer is reduced it's lost it also causes crystallization or it co also causes increase in salinization or the amount of salts in the soil when the uppermost layer is lost so there are a lot of salt crystals or uh, a lot of mineral nutrients who are not originally present on the uppermost layer they are present on the lower layers so they get exposed to the upper layer and they're harmful for the plant so it can also induce salinization or salinity of soil as well so excessive irrigation is bad it causes soil irrigation it also causes salinization and pollution can also lead to soil erosion floods de uh, deforestation what excessive water logging or degradation of land so these are all the causes of soil erosion then there are some there are basically based upon the rate of or the speed of soil loss soil erosion can also be categorized into two different categories it can be categorized into the normal or the geological erosion and the accelerated or man induced soil erosion so the normal or the geological erosion as the word term suggests it is under normal conditions it's under natural conditions and there is no human interference there is no uh, it's not because of any anthropogenic activity and it's not it's naturally occurring at its pace it's not excessively dangerous for the environment so it's a slow process it's not rapid unlike accelerated soil erosion which is because of which which is accelerated, which is which the speed is higher as the name suggests because there, it, it is induced because of human interference. Human activities are responsible for this kind of soil erosion. Not only is it more dangerous, but it is 
it's more harmful as it's rapid the speed is very fast and it does not so natural erosion or the normal geological erosion it's not bad because its pace is slow uski speed is not very fast and it's, it's, it's since uski speed is slow it basically helps form an equilibrium between loss and build up of soil so jaise jaise old soil is getting lost or uh, the older type of soil is getting removed there is gradual build up of new soil also so there is an equilibrium the normal geological erosion is to ensure ki there is a balance or there is an equilibrium there is a flow between loss and build up of soil while accelerated soil erosion it never keeps pace with the soil formation it occurs very rapidly and since it occurs very fastly it does not uh, form a balance or form a so there is a i would say a uh, a sense of disequilibrium because the because your soil is getting lost and removed very rapidly and it's not keeping pace it's not being balanced by formation of new soil so often accelerated soil erosion or man induced soil erosion is the one which is responsible for land degradation and it's very difficult to control since it's heavily influenced by human activities it's heavily influenced by deforestation urbanization pollution industrialization water logging uh, excessive uh, irrigation so and human practices so accelerated soil erosion it's difficult to control almost impossible to control and it's the one which which is responsible for the major uh, degradation of land that we see so there are some agents of soil erosion as i said ki soil erosion Uh, the upper soil erosion is responsible it it, it is the up loss of the uppermost layer but it occurs it is there because of some factors it has some causal agents which are water erosion which as we read can be because of heavy irrigation it can be a uh, wind erosion there are uh, which can be because of heavy flow of wind or highest velocity of wind there can be events like slip erosion which we commonly know as landslides there can be a uh, stream bank erosions also which you will see some pictures of which is also a um, i would say uh, events which occur when there are heavy flow of water so we'll study these four agents of soil erosion which are primarily responsible for causing soil erosion so yahan tak sab ko clear hai remedies yes ma'am theek uh, hai yes. so we we'll start with the agents of soil erosion so the first agent is water erosion so falling water or heavy flow of water or surface flow runoff so they are the agents of they are basically these are the ways how water acts like an agent of soil erosion so when water is responsible for causing soil erosion it can be of three major types it can be in the form of sheet sheet it, it can be in the form of rill or gullies so you don't have to memorize this all it's you just you can simply you must know what different types are there but you don't have to memorize everything so i'll show you three pictures which are there so sheet erosion hota hai to there is there is basically flow or uh, whole sheets of land they flow apart there is removal of uh, soil like a thin layer or like a thin sheet which is uniform in size so if i zoom in this picture to huge amount of uh, i would say huge uh, the soil or the uppermost layer it's removed like a thin layer or like a sheet and it's extremely uniform in size so that is known as uh, your sheet erosion or this type of water erosion when water acts flows in such a way that takes longer thin slice or a thin layer or thin sheet of soil along with it so that is known as sheet erosion similarly when when a uh, water occurs with such a force ki it moves rapidly over a surface so when water moves excessively with extremely high force over a surface of soil so it cuts the soil in fine ridges or in uh, thinly in finger shaped grooves so when these finger shaped grooves are formed so these grooves are known as so this type of erosion is known as rill erosion you have these finger shaped uh, grooves or these rills and this occurs when there is very uh, high uh, when the force or the occurrence of flow of water is excessively with a very high speed so, and these appear like a uh, thin channels or thin streams or thin finger like structures and then there is something called as gully erosion so gully erosion occurs when uh, these narrow channels or these narrow uh, streams or channel like structures are formed so this is your gully erosion so jab 
बेसिकली वाटर इरोजन हो रहा है तो वाटर इज एक्टिंग लाइक द एजेंट ऑफ रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर सॉइल इरोजन इट्स रिमूविंग सॉइल एंड इट रिमूव सॉइल तो यहाँ तो दे कैन फॉर्म दे कैन वॉटर कैन फॉल एज रेन ड्रॉप्स इट कैन फॉल एज सर्फेस फ्लो इट कैन फॉल एज रन ऑफ बिकॉज ऑफ इरीगेशन और बिकॉज ऑफ रिलीज फ्रॉम इंडस्ट्रीज और सम फील्ड सो एंड विच एवर वे इट मे कम इट मे come down on the surface as but it can lead to removal of soil in the form of um, form of a sheet or it can form finger like structures or it can form canals or these tunnel like structure so this is your water when water acts like a when water acts like an agent for soil erosion then wind erosion is also there so wind erosion is much more common in drier areas in areas jahan pe the type of soil is sandy so you have poor vegetation the uh, water holding capacity or the quality of soil is already very poor so it often occurs in the area jahan pe bahut zyada overfilling of trees or there is already an existing poor irrigation a poor uh, vegetation then overgrazing is also a problem there so wind erosion it basically is triggered in areas you have in semi dry or semi arid or arid regions like rajasthan jahan pe you have lesser vegetation wherein uh, overgrazing is a problem and you have sandy type of soil so they can blow away like uh, dust or in the form of sandstorms and often they are because of they may occur and it is uh, basically leads it is because of poor drainage systems so it is it can lead to events it is because of events like saltation when there is excessive evaporation so because these areas are dry they are very hot so excess evaporation can make the soil even more drier it can make it drier it can cause salts to come up on the surface and when salts they further come, move to the surface because of high evaporation so it leads to it it further it causes easy blowing away of uh, the sand the, the sandy soil which is there or it can be because of saltation when small particles they blow away as fine winds or it can occur in the form of surface creep when heavy particles can also they also move uh, on the surface with the help of wind so often wind erosion and wind erosion can look like this so excessive wind erosion can look like this when it flow it when uh, huge pieces or a huge segments of sandy soil are removed they are excessively removed because of saltation or suspension and surface creeps are formed so they can blow away as a uh, dust or they, they can even occur as sandstorm so the, this is this is how wind erosion or wind acts like an agent for sand erosion so we've studied how water can act like a source of or an agent responsible for a uh, soil erosion it can come down as rainfall or as runoffs or as a uh, or uh, as heavy rainfalls and as they come they can remove huge patches of uh, soil huge patches of land either in the form of sheet or in the form they can form structures like ridges or finger like uh, structures or they can even lead to formation of narrow tunnels or channels on the surface so they so this is how wind erosion is water erosion can play its role wind erosion uh, on the contrarily it it is basically common in drier areas jahan pe you have sandy soil you have lesser vegetation to actually hold on to the soil so it blows away very easily in the form of dust and often is because of saltation suspension or surface creep formation when heavy particles they also start moving the third agent responsible is for is basically landslide or slip erosion so landslides or slip erosion they it often uh, refers to uh, the hydraulic pressure uh, of heavy rains or heavy rainfalls or uh, so you can simply mention heavy rainfalls and if you uh, cannot memorize hydraulic pressure so hydraulic pressure hota which is because of the water so uh, heavy rainfalls or hydraulic pressure it causes cliffs of rock or these pieces of mountain to slide along so they fall off because of gravity so when there heavy rain falls so often these cliff rocks or these rocks they retain water they are so they are also the rocks are also porous the mountains are also porous they can also hold high amounts of water so as i said ki agar मतलब प्लांट्स नहीं होंगे या ट्रीज नहीं होंगे तो ट्रीज आर द वंस व्हिच आर होल्डिंग ऑन टू दिस सॉइल राइट अगर इफ आई लुक एट दिस पीस ऑफ सॉइल जहां पे देयर इज पुअर प्लांटेशन देयर आर नो ट्रीज और देयर आर सो इफ यू एवर लुक एट और इफ यू एवर नोटिस द एरियाज जहां पे लैंडस्लाइड्स अकर और स्लिप इरोजन साइंटिफिकली इफ यू स्पीक इट्स अ स्लिप इरोजन सो इन प्लेसेस जहां पे स्लिप इरोजन अकर्स सो दे आर ऑफन डिवॉइड ऑफ ट्रीज लाइक दिस एरिया 
so the areas which are devoid of trees so when there are heavy rainfall so of course the rocks or the mountains or the pieces of soil they are capable they are able to absorb the water which is there but because of gravity they require presence of trees trees are important because if the trees nahi honge to this water soil becomes heavier when it starts absorbing so much amount of water within themselves it creates pressure and because of gravity they fall off so this is why trees are important because presence of roots presence of trees which have these dense these uh, deeply penetrating root it ensures ki soil is kept in place it's not it does not fall away does not move away because of hydraulic pressures like heavy rainfall or because of gravity so had there been been a high there, if there is high population of trees or if there are high number of trees on us on some surface so it ensures ki events like slip erosion or landslides not occur occur and this is why it's advisable that we start planting more number of trees because yes green plants are important but trees are more important because they have those roots which are so it uprooting a tree is not easy because trees have such dense network of roots even the small plants some of the small plants also have very huge network of roots and roots are important because roots ensure ki soil stays in their place if you've ever uprooted a plant so you would know ki kabhi kisi ne koi plant aise uproot kiya hai kabhi bhi ya nahi yes ma'am kar chuke hain yeah so it, it takes a lot of pressure right because it ensures ki the soil stays in plate you must have felt a pressure when you try uprooting a plant even if it's a small plant so and this is why roots are important because roots ensure ki your soil stays in place and absence of cutting off or so uh, one of the reasons why landslides or slip erosion occurs is that there is excessive construction of roads on these mountains because one has to travel or has to matlab people are of course civilizing civilization is increasing so they are making roads on mountainous regions and for construction of roads there is cutting or felling of trees is the thing which you do you cut off huge portion of trees and it it leads to the slip erosion and landslide so this is the third agent or hydraulic pressure because of excessive rainfalls and their accumulation within these rocky mountainous structures it because and it it leads to because of heavy because of gravity they often fall off and this is known as slip erosion then the last factor or the fourth agent which is responsible for uh, your soil erosion is your stream bank erosion so kabhi i'm not sure if anybody has ever noticed but if if you have ever have seen a bank of a river to kabhi kabhi you has anybody ever noticed structures like these the on the banks or on the uh, against the bank huge portion of soil is lost has anybody ever noticed kabhi kya nahi yes ma'am yeah so these uh, so this is also an example of uh, this is also an event of soil erosion only but the only difference is that ki since the pressure is not very high and the flow is not as high as in case of the other three cases so only the bank only the uh, i would say the uh, strip portion or the it cut only to the bank the bank portion or the edges of your soil so it is known as riparian erosion because it mostly occurs during floods or if there is a, a flow of water is very fast so when it flows very swiftly it takes along the it takes along soil and sediments from the bank portion it splashes against the bank and huge strips of the bank or huge portions from the bank of soil there so the huge portions of soil from the banks they are lost they are taken along when water is flowing very heavily so this is known as riparian erosion because riparian matlab ki they cut through riparian ka matlab hota hai ki the the flow is fast even though it's the pressure is not as fast as in case of the other three so they are only taking along the banks that they come in contact with so they take along the soil and one co- consequence or one uh, one harmful impact of riparian erosion is also that when you take along uh, sediment such high sediments are taken along from the banks of river it causes high sedimentation so itna sara amount from the banks is it's it, it is washed away along the water so it it causes mineralization of water the if if let's say the and banks are often if you remember from water ecosystem banks are the areas which are most polluted if you ever look at a water body the bank portion or the coastal region would is always more polluted than than the central region or the region which is away from 
human civilization or is away from uh, urbanization so often bank regions are more polluted because these have apart from uh, being a uh, very uh, prone or very susceptible to pollution or polluting agents these are also the uh, the banks also have high component of nutrients and minerals so if if huge flow of water it takes it splashes along these banks it takes a long huge portion of sediments so mineralization also increases in such water bodies which are experiencing stream bank erosion so there are four major agents which have started till now and it often leads to uh, I'll show you how it looks. So it often leads to something called a sediment load. So when बहुत riparian erosion बहुत ज़्यादा होता है, तो sediment load या release of sedimentation or the riparian erosion increases very excessively. So one of the rivers which has highest sediment load is your Yellow River, a river in China which has excessively high amount of sediment. And, and although it's a fresh water body, but since the amount of sediments are so high, it's unfit for consumption. So this is how the Yellow River looks because uh, sedimentation or sediment load or slip or Uh, riparian erosion is very high in these river bodies so a uh, sediment load also affects the quality of it a uh, riparian erosion or uh, the stream bank erosion it causes sedimentation or increase in stream load of river which makes it unfit for consumption then a uh, there are some examples of soil erosion in india as well so the most common example of examples of soil erosion anywhere in the world or anywhere otherwise would be so pehla reason humne char type ke erosions padhe hain to the most common of them I think is landslides because landslides they occur very commonly, and one of the reasons why they occur is because of construction of roads. So uh, one example of soil erosion is the border road organization, which is responsible for road construction, which is responsible for making roads uh, on these mountainous regions. And because improper care is taken by them, they not uh, the uh, regulations are not correctly for they have not been correctly followed. It has led to release of debris. gravel and sediment in the satluj river so one example of soil erosion in india is the is uh, the border road organization which as the name suggests is responsible for construction of roads and this has led to high levels of sedimentation or high sediment load in rivers like in river like satluj then uh, construction of bhakra dam on satluj river in himachal pradesh it has uh, it, it basically forms a reservoir a water reservoir and Water reservoirs are good. A lot of dams they have these lakes or water reservoirs, which basically act like deposits of water. But in mountainous areas, often sedimentation is very high, as we studied because of slip erosion. The rates of sedimentation and as well as because of uh, slip bank, uh, stream bank erosion, the rates of soil erosion are really high. So even though they have these water reservoirs, but they these reservoirs are extremely high in deposits in high in sediments and silts which cause it degrades the quality of water and is also one of the examples of soil erosion and lastly spiti river which uh, this which uh, so basically discharge of uh, silt it, it causes it it discharges uh, silt into satluj river and because there is a loss of there is lesser vegetation there is loss of vegetation so soil erosion is more prevalent so spiti river is at a higher altitude and it it at join it at a lower altitude is a satluj river so as it flows so since there is lack of vegetation there is improper uh, poor uh, vegetation so soil erosion is a lot more prevalent it's common and as water flows it carries along these so heavy material would always would of course be will be carried along silt and sediments would be carried along and they enter into satluj river so satluj river is heavily so these all the three examples are of satluj river only bhakra dam border road organization as well as spiti river how these three are affecting they are increasing the sediment load or sedimentation of satluj river at Uh, himachal pradesh will ask for by construction of bhakra dam uh, because of border uh, road organization which is uh, which is responsible for construction of road and spiti valley wherein lack of vegetation is responsible for soil erosion so we have three examples jahan par uh, lack of uh, vegetation matlab 
maybe your wind and water erosion are the reasons why soil erosion is happening in this particular case uh, slip erosion is responsible for increasing uh, sedimentation or soil erosion then lastly in, in, in case of bhakra dam uh, stream bank stream bank erosion riparian erosion as well as uh, is primarily primarily responsible for soil erosion so is this clear to everybody sab kuch acche se samajh aa gaya koi doubt koi confusion बच्चों को समझ नहीं आया तो आई विल रिपीट इट अगेन वुड यू अंडरस्टैंड यस मैम ऑल यस ठीक है देन द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इन दिस चैप्टर इज डिसर्टिफिकेशन सो वी कवर्ड सोइल इरोजन टिल नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट विद डिसर्टिफिकेशन सो व्हाट इज डिसर्टिफिकेशन दीस आर सम इफेक्ट्स ऑफ सोइल इरोजन व्हिच आई थिंक यू अंडरस्टूड बाय नाउ कि देयर इज रैपिड सेडिमेंटेशन वाटर इज अ वॉइस आर इफेक्टेड लैंडस्लाइड्स अकर द रिवर बॉड स्मॉलर रिवर बॉडीज लाइक लेक्स एंड एस्टुरीज आर चोक्ड देन डिपोजिशन ऑफ सिल्ट और सोइल ऑन वाटर बेड्स इट इट लीड्स टू अ हेवियर और मोर फ्लड्स ग्राउंड वाटर लेवल्स आर ड्रेन्ड इरिगेशन एंड ट्यूब इरिगेशन आर इफेक्टेड सो दिस आर सम कंसीक्वेंसेस और इफेक्ट्स ऑफ सोइल इरोजन नाउ व्हाट इज द डिसर्टिफिकेशन व्हाट डू यू नो बाय Uh, or understand by desertification conversion of land into deserts conversion of land into deserts very good so desertification is also another type of land degradation much like soil erosion so like soil erosion is another is also a type of land degradation process desertification is also a type of land degradation where a fertile piece of land it gets converted into a desert it gets it becomes arid in nature so the process of conversion of a fertile land into a desert primarily because of deforestation and overgrazing it is known as desertification so this, uh, as i said ki uh, because uh, desertification primarily it it is it refers to conversion of a fertile piece of piece of land it's getting converted into an infertile into a piece of land not uh, which is not fit for sustaining heavy vegetation or uh, does not uh, offer uh, huge green covers for uh, for the grazing animal so because of deforestation and overgrazing desertification occurs and it can cause migration it can force people to move to other places of so often in areas jahan pe desertification occurs where well, in areas jahan pe because of deforestation or overgrazing so basically what is happening is ke you are cutting trees you also uh, you feeding your cattle uh, the green cover or the uh, grasses as well as the herb the plants are being uh, they're being eaten by these grazers so if when the piece of land becomes excessively over exhausted it becomes excessively it, it is excessively exploited by the people then they start migrate migrating that they, those people they start moving to other places to exploit resources so desertification basically refers to it basically is a process of degradation jahan pe not only is a piece of land converted into desert but it also uh, it is also responsible for migration of or uh, increasing uh, agricultural expansion because it cause it, it the piece of land becomes so exhausted becomes so over exploited that people start moving to other places for finding their resources or for finding means of livelihood so often deforestation uh, overgrazing they are responsible they are affected by factors like rainfall temperature they affect factors like wind velocity and this in turn leads to desertification so desertification agar deforestation hoga to rainfall and floods are affecting are affected uh, overgrazing hogi to wind velocity is affected if you if the trees they no longer often uh, they offer a huge green cover to resist or to fall to offer resistance to heavy velocity of winds as an acacia plant which has a huge green cover but if that green cover is lost it won't really offer any resistance to the high velocities of wind and temperature is also increase it also starts increasing because of events like deforestation so the deforestation and overgrazing they they modulate the rate of rainfall they alter temperature and they also are no longer able to regulate wind velocity and these three factors are responsible for conversion of a fertile piece of land into a non fertile or an infertile piece of land so events like deforestation and overgrazing which alter rainfall which alter 
temperature and cannot can no longer limit or restrict wind velocity because of these factors it causes it 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 triggers the conversion of a fertile piece of land into a arid or a desert piece a desert region and this is known as desertification so i hope it's clear to everyone yes ma'am okay so i think you have a class now so jinki class hai wo they yes, can give i'll take attendance ओके मैम थैंक यू मैम मैम रिकॉर्डिंग बंद कर दीजिए हाँ आई स्टॉप कहाँ से